Y'all here, welcome to Wednesday night. We usually do Wednesday nights live. We're not going to be live tonight because we're having a little bit of internet trouble. So uh, actually filming this uh, at church a little bit late earlier this afternoon and recording it so that we can put it up tonight. Now, after we finish watching this tonight uh, on Facebook or on YouTube, wherever you might watch it at, on Facebook Live, we're going to have a little time of Q&A and interaction and prayer with one another. So you can hop on right there. Go ahead and take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of James. That's where we're going to be hanging out tonight. The book of James, first chapter of the book of James. Now, right now, there's a lot of questions that a lot of people have, including me, about what's going on. You know, where do we go from here? What's happening next? We don't know. Right now, we have something, uh, a desperate need for something. Uh, it's called wisdom. Wisdom. And this is not just a need that we have in this season, in this moment. Not at all. In fact, it's a need that we have at all times. We're going to need it in the future. We've needed it in the past. We certainly need it in the present. There are going to be days and there are going to be seasons. There are going to be times in our lives where there's going to be pressure that we feel. There's going to be affliction, maybe persecution. There's going to be pain, decisions that we have to make where we don't have any earthly idea what to do or, or how we should approach or move on with this or that. And here's the great news. When those storms do come, which are inevitable in this life, when the seas get rough and, and, and when we kind of lose our bearings, even to the point of, of thinking about abandoning the ship, Jesus, our captain, who commands the winds and the waves with the sound of his voice, who holds the keys to victory in his victorious hand, who, who is life and who is abundance, he promises us the wisdom that we need in these very difficult times. I want to read to you a little bit about wisdom. Uh, tonight from the book of James uh, about its availability. I want us to talk for a moment about how to obtain it and why that's huge, why that's important. So read with me in James chapter 1 verses 5 through verse 8. James writes, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally, upbraideth not, and it shall be given unto him. But let him ask in faith, without doubting, nothing wavering, because he that wavers is like a sea, a wave of a sea that's been tossed to and fro. Let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Listen to verse 8. For a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. All right, the first aspect that I want us to see of this text is found in verse 5. Something very interesting happens. James asks a question, but it's really not so much a question. He says here in our text, if any of you lack wisdom. That term if can be a little bit tricky in the New Testament language because James, when he says if here and asks this question, is not implying that there could be a possible person who doesn't need wisdom. He's not implying that possibility at all. The way that this, this word and this term is kind of constructed in the original language is, is much better read since instead of if. In fact, it's used elsewhere in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter, uh, I remember what the chapter is off the top of my head, but Matthew's gospel, he, he's telling the story of when Jesus uh, fasted for 40 days. And after that 40-day fast, Satan comes in and says, if you are the Son of God. Satan knows that Jesus is the Son of God. He's not really asking him. He's not saying it's possible that you might not be. It's, it's really better read and translated since you are the Son of God. And that's, that's the way this actually reads in our text today. So James is not saying if it's possible that some of you may lack wisdom. Not at all. What James is doing in Sinead is it's saying since you need wisdom, since you lack wisdom. So, so James is writing here to a dispersed a Christian church, and, and, and he's saying, since you lack wisdom to know what to do next. Now, now, what is this thing called wisdom that James is saying that we lack? Wisdom is the ability to see earth circumstances from heaven's vantage point. Wisdom is the ability to look at, at, at life, look at the situations that we face in life from, from God's eyes. Seeing with his eyes. It's, it's being able to see the, the decisions and the trials and the troubles uh, and situations of life from heaven's perspective, from God's perspective. And that's huge. Because here, we don't see that way. 
We, we struggle with that. The Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 2, that, that now, right now, in, in this, this earthly abode that we exist in, he says that we see like, like looking through a glass darkly or, or see dimly. And he explains that one day it'll be face to face. That's why the old song says we'll understand it better by and by. But we don't have complete understanding here. Now this is the Apostle Paul who was the greatest missionary, theologian, church planter, evangelist that the world has ever seen that God would use uh, to write two-thirds of the New Testament inspired, of course, by his Holy Spirit. This is that guy that we're talking about. And, and Saul, or Paul goes on to say in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that that now I know in part. Now I prophesy in part. So, so Paul was admitting, I don't get it. I don't understand everything here. So, so we're the same way. There are going to be some things that will happen, things that are happening right now that we just don't understand. Is that fair? There are going to be some things that, that take place, some decisions that, that lie before us that we are clueless in and of ourselves to, to know what to do, right? We need something greater than our limited understanding. We, we need to see clearer than what our physical eyes will allow. We need help from above. We need wisdom. We need wisdom. And according to our text in James chapter 1, verses 5 through 8, that is available. Wisdom, the ability to see earth circumstances from heaven's vantage point is available. How do we obtain it? We're going to look at that tonight, all right? First of all, if I'm going to obtain wisdom, which I so desperately need, I must acknowledge my need. It starts there. I must acknowledge that I have a need for wisdom. Now, human nature doesn't like doing that, right? Human nature doesn't like admitting that I need something. We don't like asking for help. We just don't like it. We don't want to trouble others. Uh, we, we really, sometimes pride creeps in and we don't think we need uh, wisdom. We don't think we need any help from anybody else. And I wonder how often, though, the foolish decisions that we make, the, the, the terrible reactions that we have, the, the hasty words that we speak have come from leaning on our own limited understanding and ability to see things, our limited perspective, rather than asking for God's help. Verse 5 says, If any of you lack wisdom, since you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him ask of God. Ultimately, the, the scriptures describe us most often as, as his children, as, as sheep. As sheep. And when we think about sheep, we, we tend to think about uh, a cute, cuddly little creature hopping around and, and having fun. But, but if you've been around sheep at all, you know that there are very few animals more extra than sheep. And that's what the Bible describes us as, sheep. If you get around sheep, they can be stinky sometimes. They can be messy. They certainly are um, not the smartest animal in the world, uh, just being honest with you. And, and sheep will, of course, bite from time to time. And that's a pretty descri good description of me and, and you, isn't it? When a sheep is left to its own devices, left to itself, when it's isolated, when it's alone, when it's figuring life out on its own, it is a recipe for disaster. King David, one of God's sheep, when he was doing things his own way, disaster, disaster. But, but yet he found a good shepherd. And that good shepherd he wrote about in a text that you're very familiar with, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in greener pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod, thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table in the presence of mine enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Familiar? That's the life of a sheep who has recognized its need for a Savior, who has acknowledged his need for a good shepherd. Take the shepherd out of the equation, what do we find? I shall want. I shall walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear evil. 
for so many storms are raging right now and thunders booming and lightnings crashing and rain is pouring and the winds are howling and you're just treading water trying to stay afloat in your own strength and in your own understanding running on empty living defeated no vision no purpose no direction what would happen if you acknowledged your need for a shepherd acknowledge your need for wisdom what would happen if we would seek him first instead of as a last resort how much more joy would we be living in how much more peace would we find how how much more fruit would be bore in our lives how fewer heartaches how, how fewer tears how fewer sleepless nights if we just acknowledge our need for a shepherd if we acknowledge our need for wisdom it's like the old hymn says it what what a friend we have in jesus i love the first verse of that hymn oh what peace we often forfeit Oh, what needless pain we bear, all because we did not carry everything to God in prayer. So obtaining wisdom begins with acknowledging that we don't have all the answers. It begins with acknowledging that, that we haven't arrived, that we have a great need, and, and He is the great need that we have. So acknowledge, first of all, our need for wisdom. Secondly, if I'm going to obtain wisdom, I must accept God's promises. Verse 5 continues, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives to all men liberally. He gives it to it. If we'll ask, it shall be given unto him. I'm going to make a big statement to you tonight. I will only ask God for that which I believe he is capable of giving me. Let me say that again. I will only ask of God that which he is capable of giving me. We say all the time here at Union that our belief determines our behavior. This is why our theology matters. Our view of God, our doctrine, why it's such a big deal. What I believe will determine how I behave. And as that relates to wisdom, I will only ask God for wisdom if I truly believe that he can give it to me. So here's our question. Can he? Can God provide wisdom right now in this tense situation that we're in? Is he actually willing to do that if he can? Well, understand, first of all, that God is the source of wisdom. He's the source of wisdom. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6, The Lord gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Colossians chapter 2, verse number 3, In him are hidden all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. God delights, secondly, in blessing his people. We have a hard time with that sometimes, but God truly delights in blessing his people. Mark chapter 11, verse number 24, whatever things that you desire when you pray, believe them and receive them and you shall have them. Luke chapter 11, verse number 9, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened. James chapter 4, verse number 2, you have not because you ask not, right? And too many don't ask because they don't believe that God is interested in giving them the desires of his heart, their hearts. They, they don't ask because sometimes they don't want to trouble God. They don't want to worry God with, why would I ask God about my situation when, when the coronavirus is out there? God's got more important things to deal with than me. Have you ever thought that way before? We don't want to trouble God. Hear me well. God is not resentful of our dependence upon him. In fact... Actually, the opposite is true. James chapter 4, verse 6, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. He gives grace to the humble. So I've got to acknowledge my need for wisdom. I've got to accept God's promise of wisdom. He's promised I will give it to you liberally if you just ask. But there's the third thing. We must ask for wisdom by faith. We must ask for wisdom by faith. There's one condition for receiving wisdom from above. Verses 6 through 8. Let him ask in faith without wavering. Let him ask in faith without doubting. For he that doubts is like a wave of the sea that's driven by the wind and it's tossed. Listen to verses 7 and 8. That man, that man, let him not think that he's going to receive anything of the Lord for a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Grip this right here. Without wavering, right? Without doubting, double-minded. What this is speaking of is with a divided loyalty. 
with a divided loyalty. James is describing this, this person as, as a wave tossed back and forth between what they want and what God wants for them. Think of it this way. The only person who will not receive wisdom of God when they ask for it are those who pray with a backup plan in case they don't like the answer that God gives them. That's it. That's it. To, to ask in faith without wavering, without doubting, is asking with no plan B. It, it, is asking, being pre-committed to receiving and acting upon whatever God gives me. That's what this is dealing with. So, so to wrap things up, you need wisdom? God has it. And, and he wants to share it with you and, and with me, his sheep. The good shepherd wants to share wisdom with his sheep. God's always desired to communicate with his people in this way. He spoke in Eden from a bush that was ablaze from the prophets. God, God desired to dwell among his people in the tabernacle and the temple. And in Christ, he puts on flesh and speaks to his people. He's still speaking to us today. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He speaks through his word. He speaks through his Holy Spirit that's within us. He speaks through the church, other brothers and sisters. He even speaks through circumstances. God is speaking to us. Are you listening to what he's saying? He desires to speak into our lives, to give us wisdom. But we must see our need, acknowledge that we have a need for it. We must accept his promise of supplying that need. And we must ask for wisdom with no plan B. With, with nothing in the background. With faith and not doubting. So looking for answers today. Looking for guidance. Looking for directions. You can receive help from on high. It's available. All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to wrap up in prayer, and then in just a few moments, there's going to be a little link on your Facebook page, and we're going to go live. I would love to talk with you about what we talked about with today, and then we'll share prayer requests, and we'll pray for one another. So let's pray, and then we'll wrap up. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for wisdom. We thank you that it's available if we had only acknowledge our need for it. If we would only, Father, believe that, that you are who you say you are and your word is true and you have a desire to pour wisdom out upon your people. And Father, if we would only ask by faith without doubting. No plan B. Father, give us wisdom in these difficult days. Thank you for hearing our prayer tonight, Lord. Thank you for your word that never returns void. Use it in our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.